kindly invite someone, whoever the Holy Spirit may put in your heart, to come and hear this word from the Lord. It's a very important word. But before we get to the word, we are going to pray. We are going to pray. And there are some things that the Lord wants me to uh, relate to you. They are in the form of encouragement, but they are direct instructions from the Lord that will help you to navigate your way in this very time that we are in. So kindly log in, invite someone over to come and hear the word of the Lord for themselves that they may be as edified as you and I are getting edified by the living word of the Most High God. Also let me know if you can hear me. We are still waiting on our sound to get it right so that when I use a mic, you don't hear an echo. Um, we don't really have uh, much of a technical team as yet because like I've said to you before we are doing everything as we instructed by the Lord so during these sessions there are certain individuals that are okay, that are allowed to come and bear witness of the word physically so by the grace of the Lord um, the ministry will be open to the public very soon I know many many of you have been asking um, where the church is and you want to visit and you perhaps want to uh, come and commune with us on a regular basis physically. But as I've mentioned before, we only do things as per instructed by the Holy Spirit because this is a very, very peculiar time that we are in. We are not going to do things because we are accustomed to. We are going to do things because the Holy Spirit is instructing us to do so. So, just know that the very way that God has chosen to give you the word in this season is the most effective way this particular word can come to you as a child of God who seeks to know the mind of God in this time so as to do that which is being directed and instructed and given as counsel of the Holy Spirit. However means and whatever means the Lord decides to use to speak to me and to speak to me, we should know that it is the best and the most effective. No matter how we may feel about it or no matter what we think or feel is the best way we could receive this word. So I just want to give you that word of encouragement and understanding of why we are doing things in this type of manner. And like I've indicated before, because of the manner of the word that I have to share with you, um, there are certain things that I am instructed to do by the Lord to make sure that I get the word in its accuracy. And there are some researches that I have to do when the Lord gives me his word. So all of that doesn't give me the normal schedule that most people may have who are called as servants of the Most High God. So I'm entirely dependent on the instructions that I get on a daily basis from the Holy Spirit. And I need you to bear with me on that and understand that we are in a time of transition. And in a time of transition, you cannot have things uh, you know, operating in the normal way that we are used to them operating. That on its own should be an indicator to you that we are in very, very strange times, to say the least. And we are in times that demand and call for us to always be ready to do what the Lord instructs us to do. That is outside our comfort zone and that is also outside what we are normally accustomed to. So before I get to the word, um, the rest of the word, there is a word that I want to give you. A very, very uh, timely word for you individually. Um, and I pray that it will bless you as much as it has uh, blessed me personally. So before we get to it, I just want to give you two more minutes for those that have not yet logged in, um, to log in so that we can begin the word of the Lord together. It's very, very important. <laughs> 
uh, to start the word from the very beginning that you may receive the fullness of what the Lord has in store for you through that very word. So I'm just going to give those that have not yet logged in two more minutes to do that. You can also help them by tagging someone that you know should hear this word from the Lord and someone that you know might need a word from the Lord in this very time to make crucial decisions in their lives that are going to need the counsel of the Most High God. Also indicate for us where you are joining us from and also indicates to us if you can hear me properly from wherever you are hearing me from. Just kindly indicate if you can hear me properly. If my voice is not drowned by the instrumental that I'm playing in the background. If you can do that for me, that will help me a great deal to know and understand if you can hear me properly so that when you do begin the word, um, you may not miss out on anything that the Lord has for us in this very day. I need us to be very attentive to you. I need us to be very attentive. Remember, the Lord wants to instill within us soberness and understanding of the times and the seasons that we are in, that we may be able to make informed decisions in our lives in this very time that we are in of great shakings, but also times of being ushered into the greatest time as a believer, to walk in the fullness of your true identity and to walk into the fullness of your inheritance as forgiven by the Father of glory. And when I talk about the inheritance, I know that majority of the time, we're just always thinking about material things. But the greatest part of your inheritance, my brothers and my sisters, is eternal life that has been given unto us by Jesus Christ when he died on the cross and rose again on our behalf. The greatest gift anyone can ever give you is eternal life and Jesus Christ has already availed that gift to you and to me that we may walk in it and we may make it back home and not be taken to this undesirable place called hell. So if you can hear me properly just indicate that. Um, Some are saying loud enough. Um, some of you are saying you cannot hear me properly. So I'm going to try and um, elevate my voice. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me. I know when I use a mic, some of you also complain that there's an echo. So we're still trying to deal with that to make sure that by the time you do use it, it does not affect my voice, but it actually does what it's supposed to do to only um, amplify it. So, those of you that were complaining that you can't hear me, do you still find it difficult to hear me, even now? I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Once the Spirit takes over and He starts to give you the word of the Lord, I won't be in the sea, and I'm very sure that He knows how high my voice should be in this very day. So He will make sure that you can hear me properly. Majority of you are saying that you can hear me. I thank the Lord for that. Those of you that may not be able to hear me, kindly just increase the volume on whatever device that you're using to connect with us in this day. And hopefully you'll be able to hear me clearly as we do that. All right. I think I've given you enough time to log in and to settle down as you get ready to hear the word of the Lord that he has in store for us in this day. One more disclaimer I want to make. It's more of a caution. It's more of a warning. You know, there is this addiction that sometimes we have or sometimes we adopt as children of God to always hear a fresh word from the Lord. Now, there's nothing wrong with wanting to hear from God as we should especially in the time that we are in. You need to know the mind of God. You need to know what God has to say about every situation. You need the eyes of the Spirit in this time because your natural eyes will deceive you. 
So it is very important and it is a good is a good thing to always yearn and thirst and hunger after the word of the Most High God. However, it is very, very, very detrimental if we get addicted to always hearing a fresh word and never taking that word into effect in our lives. Sometimes we get so hooked in hearing what God has to say, but we don't get hooked or we then neglect following through in the very word that we have heard from the Lord. Majority of us, we take the words that we hear on a weekly basis and we shelf it and then we wait for the next word to come. And when you do that, my friend, you are just like someone who has not even heard the, the word of the Lord at all. And in fact, you are in a far worse place because now that you have knowledge of the instructions of the Lord for that hour, you are bound to follow through in that which you know. For the Bible says knowledge is binding. Knowledge is binding. So if you know the word of the Lord and you are constantly hearing the instructions of the Lord, but you are not following through in those instructions, and yet you are always thirsting and yearning and seeking a fresh word from the Lord, then something is wrong, my friend. And you need to check your walk with the Lord. Because when we get the word of the Lord and the instructions of the Lord, like David would say, David was a man after the heart of God. But every time you would hear him say, that you may teach me, that you may teach me. Why do I want to hear the voice of the Lord? Why do I want to hear what God has to say? That he may teach me. That he may instruct me. He said that in Psalm 32, he says that you may teach me and instruct me in the way that I should go. That you may guide me with your eye. Why do we hear the word of the Lord? Why do we seek after the word of the Lord and the heart of God. It is for a very simple reason, my friend. It is for the word to teach you in the ways of the Lord so that you may abide and live by those ways. It is for the word to instruct you so that you may know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. So that he may guide you with his own eye because the word also has eyes or has an eye, if I may put it that way. The word is God himself. So when he says that you may guide me with your eye, it means that the word has an eye. And this eye, unlike your two eyes, your two fleshly eyes, this eye sees all things concerning your situation. And this eye is able to let you know and guide you and help you to maneuver your way out of whatever situation you are in to make the best decision given whatever it is that you are going through according to the instruction and the counsel of the Most High God. So anytime you come under the hearing of the voice and the word of the Lord, you should have one thing in mind. Lord, I am going to listen to your word that I may be instructed in the way that I should go. I'm going to listen to your word that I may be taught your ways that I may live them and forsake my own ways and forsake the way of the world. I am going to listen to your word, Lord, that you may guide me with your eye. I'm going to listen to your word that I may know what you want me to do and how you view what is happening on ground as compared to what the world is making it out to be. I want to know how you view it. I want to know what you have to say about it. I want to know that I may be guided in all the life decisions that I have to make on a daily basis. That should be the primary reason why you come under the hearing of the word of the Most High God. That He may teach you. That He may guide you in your decision making. Don't listen to the word of the Lord and then shelf it and make your own decisions and then come back and cry to God. Because whatever it is that you decided to do is not working. 
Majority of the time, we find ourselves where we are without peace, without understanding, simply because we do not utilize the word of the Lord in our lives. We do not actualize the word in our lives. We hear it, we listen to it, but we are like those who are deaf and we are like those who are blind because we refuse to open our eyes of understanding that the word may profit our lives, that the word, the word may transform our lives into the likeness of that of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. So I want you to do that today, my friend. Have a different attitude going forward because believe me, the time that we are moving in and the time that we are in in this time, only the word of God will see it. And I am not exaggerating that. Only the word of the Lord, only the report of the Most High God will see it in this season. Anything outside God in this season is death. Anything outside God in this season is going to drown you. Anything outside God in this season is meant to suck the life out of you. It is meant to leave you hopeless. It is meant to leave you drained. It is meant to leave you depressed, discouraged. Everything that is happening in the world in this time is meant to take you out. But we have a God that speaks life. We have a God that warns us to not take certain paths where the enemy has put traps on our path that we may fall and not make it. The word of the Lord is here to give you life and life abundantly. The word of the Lord is here to lead you in the path of truth. That you may no longer be confused. That you may no longer be on the path of destruction. But you may be in the path that leads to life and life eternal. So I hope you understand, my friend, the reason why we are given this word by the Most High God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, my friend. Let us come into a time of prayer that we may submit our vessels unto the Most High, unto the Spirit, that we may be able to know and understand all human things. That which you are doing and that which you are saying to us in this time. Open our hearts, turn them into flesh, that they may be tender and receptive to the word that you have for us in this time and in this very season. Take hold of our minds, O King of Kings, and wash away all manner of confusion, all manner of lies that the enemy has put in our lives and he has planted in our minds. May those lies not take root in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray in this time, O King of Kings, for everyone under the sound of my voice, that all they hear may be the leading of the spirit of truth. May no lie proceed from my mouth, O King of Kings. I submit myself willingly unto your spirit and your spirit alone. May your truth that builds, your truth that guides, your truth that encourages, your truth, O King of Kings, that warns, your truth that shapes up our lives, your truth that brings order back into our lives your truth that ministers life and life abundantly. May that truth be ministered in our spirit man in this day. May that truth and that truth alone take root in our spirit man. May it find us better ground to land on and to be planted and rooted in us in such a manner that it can never be uprooted by any storm, by any challenge, by any shaking. May the very truth that you are instilling within us in this very day, O King of Kings, cause us to walk in your favor, to walk in your provision, to walk in your light, to walk in your inheritance, to walk in the positions that you have set for us to walk in. Before the foundations of this world were laid, Lord, you knew what our lives looked like. 
You knew what our assignments are. You knew what our destinies look like. We tap into those very lives that you have written of us in the heavenlies. We thank you, O King of Kings, for the seed of your word that is taking root in our lives and booting out every manner of lie, every tree, every seed, every seedling that had been planted by the enemy. May they be uprooted by the roots in our lives and never have a place in us as your spirit takes over every fiber of our being. That only truth may find room in our lives, in our minds, in our hearts, in our spirit, man, in our soul, and be evident and showcased in the outside appearance of our lives. In every work that we do, may it be a result of your true having taken root in our lives and producing fruit, fruit of goodness, as you had initially intended for humanity to only produce goodness. We tap into that very covenant that you made with us in the very beginning, O King of Kings. A covenant of goodness. A covenant of multiplying and a covenant of only producing goodness. We do away with any manner of corruption that had taken root in our lives by reason of receiving the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of righteousness. The blood that the only blood that is approved before the Father. We tap into that very blood. For you have availed it for every man and woman who will receive you as their Lord and their Savior. We thank you, O King of Kings, for being king over our lives. For we have a king that is not indifferent to our infirmities. A king that knows and understands everything that we go through and has availed a way out by reason of redemption and by reason of the gift of the Holy Spirit that has come down to help us to walk in the fullness of the righteousness of Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit that in any way raised you, Holy Spirit, we embrace your function and your position in our lives. We say take over us and teach us and take us in a path of righteousness in Christ Jesus. Release us and relieve us of effort, self-effort. Release us and loosen us from the grips of the enemy and the deception of the enemy. We thank you for ushering us into truth. We thank you for the continual sanctification as you make us and as you help us to be transformed into the likeness of Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. We embrace that transformation. We embrace the journey to be made the perfect bride for the perfect King of Kings, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, whom we honor and whom we have made king over our lives and lord over our lives and have forsaken any other who had been lord over us before we embraced him as our one and only lord and may through our lives holy spirit help us to live in such a way that it is clear that indeed he is lord over us as we lay down our own choices as we lay down ambition, as we lay down anything that we had in mind that does not correlate and is not in direct alignment with the will of our King and our Lord. We embrace your ways, O King of Kings. We say, make us that which the Father had in mind. Make us into your perfect bride. That when you look at us, we may be spotless before you. We may be beautiful before you according to your standard of beauty and of purity of heart. For when you look unto us, you look at the heart. You do not look at that which man looks at. So may our hearts be made perfect before you. 
by mimicking your own heart, we thank you and we bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory be unto the most high God. Zalia Before I get to the rest of this word, like I said, there's a word of encouragement that I want to give you. Hopefully, in the course of time, I'll be able to give you daily words according to the reading of the Holy Spirit that are timely with whatever has been released by the enemy to give you strategies of how to overcome the strategies of the enemy in this very time that we are in. God bless you, beloved. Let us kindly come in and hear the word of the Lord. So, two weeks ago, the Lord started giving me scriptures that have to do with praise. The Lord started giving me scriptures that have to do with praise. And I understood why. Because the enemy has released in this time an attack of the mind. An attack of the mind. There is a lot of accusations that the enemy has released in this time that are coming to the people or the children of God. He is coming in in dreams. He is coming through your thoughts. He is coming through whatever it is that you see on social media, whether on social media or you see on the news. He has come for you in this time to instill fear, to instill discouragement. He is literally breathing on you 24-7. And he wants to make sure that you renounce the word of the Lord. Listen, the enemy comes for one and only one thing. And that is for you to change your mind about what the Lord has said concerning your life. He comes to speak death to that which the Lord has declared life. He comes to tell you that it is not going to happen. He comes to tell you that you are going to die. You are not going to live. Look around you. Look at what is happening. People are dying like flies. Things have changed. The climate has changed. Things. The world is coming to an end. There are rumors of wars and wars all around the world. What does this tell you? The enemy is telling you the opposite of what the King of Kings has declared. My question is, whose report are you going to make? Jesus Christ covered this in Matthew 24. He knew that the enemy would come at you in this time when all these things start to happen, when the pestilences have been released, when wars and rumors of wars are happening, when nation comes against nation. He knew that the enemy would whisper to you, it is the end. It is the end of the world and it is the end of you. Drop the tools. There is no reason to dream anymore. There is no point in living anymore. There is no point in making plans anymore. You are doomed. That is your enemy speaking. That is not the report of the world. You need to be able to know the obvious ways of differentiating between the voice of God and the voice of the enemy. It is very simple. Satan never ministers life. Satan never ministers life. He's always ministering discouragement and fear. He never ministers life. But God wants to deliver you today from his lies. You need to know and understand. Jesus can never tell you it is over. Jesus can, as long as there is breath in your mouth, beloved. There is hope for you. There is a future for you that God wants you to awaken to. That God wants you to awaken to. And for you to do that, you need to be able to shake off the lies. You need to be able to say no to allowing your ear gates and your eye gates from feeding on lies. And the Lord has made it very clear to us to know and understand how to spot the lies, where the lies are coming from. 
and what the lights look like. Jesus has come to give you life and life in abundance. And Jesus does not change his mind. Jesus has set his mind on what he's going to do in your life. But you, at the end of the day, beloved, you choose whose report you are going to believe. And whichever report you are going to believe, that is what you are going to see happening in your life. That is what is going to take over your life. And no one is exempted from this bombarding of the enemy with lies. He comes at every single one of us with his lies. That is why I have said it many times. It is very, very important to write down the minute you hear the word of the Lord for your life, the minute Holy Spirit ministers something to you, the minute you are given a prophetic word by the servants of the Most High God, the minute you hear the plans of God for the time that you are in and your dispensation, you need to write those down. Because the enemy is going to come and twist it. He's going to come and challenge that word. Now, if the word is not written down, he is going to distort and twist the word until you have no record and you have no memory of the original word of the Lord over your life. And you are going to fall into his traps and believe his lies concerning your life. So the tool, and here's the thing you need to understand, beloved. This war between these two kingdoms, it is not emotional. God does not appeal to your emotions when he gives you strategies. Satan appeals to your emotions because he knows when you are in your emotions, he's going to win you over. When you are in your emotions, you make decisions that are according to whatever it is that you are feeling. You make unstable decisions that are detrimental to your walk and to your destiny. Because it is according to whatever you feel. So if the enemy brings something, a test comes in your life, and the enemy wants to tempt you, it means that however way you are going to react, however way you are going to feel, is going to determine how you are going to react to that. It is going to determine what you have believed in that time. It is going to determine which report you believe. And that cannot be the life of a child of God. You need to make sure that you guard, jealously guard, the word of the Lord over your life and over this generation in your heart. Jealously guard it. When he came at Jesus Christ, he didn't come with obvious lies. That is how deception is. Deception is very close to the truth, but it is not true. And for someone who knows the truth, someone who has written down the truth, when the enemy comes at you, you, you literally pull out that word, you hold it up, and you say, it is written. It is written. If you can't recall it at that very time, go and pull out that word and speak to your enemy and say it is written. When any report comes your way that masquerades itself as the word of the Lord, whether in your dreams, whether through people, because here's the thing you need to understand, beloved. Satan can even give people dreams that are speaking death into your life. And because you don't know the difference between the voice of God and the voice of the enemy, you buy into the lie simply because someone is saying, I had a dream about you. That says one, two, three, four. You need to test the spirit. You need to test the spirit. Paul says, for we fight not against flesh and blood. Before we get to the rest of the world, I need you to be equipped in this season, beloved, so that Satan stops taking advantage of you and stops taking advantage of your ignorance of the ways of the spirit realm. It is very simple. God never changes his mind. Never. If he spoke it, he will do it at his own time. 
Now, no matter what you may see happening around you, you need to understand that the word of the Lord stands. Paul said, we do not fight against flesh and blood, but against unseen principalities and powers and authorities in high places. And at the same time, in Colossians, he also mentions that there is one in whom we have believed by the name Jesus Christ, who sits at the right side of the Father, who is above all principalities and powers in high places, which means he's at the highest of places. So which means that there are some activities that happen in the high places that are below where Jesus is. Now, if you don't know what is happening in the highest of places, which is where Jesus Christ is, then you are going to mistake what is happening in the high places which are lower than where he is, but nonetheless are high places. You are not going to be able to distinguish between what is happening in their realm and in the realm where God is. That is why he's constantly inviting us to a higher place. David knew this and he understood it very well. David understood it very well. When you look at the Psalms, David starts off by letting God, by declaring who the Lord is. Because as Lord, those of you that have watched movies or those of you that are familiar with the royalty, those of you that are familiar with kingdoms, you will understand that when you enter the throne room of the king, you come in with praise. You come in with praise. When you enter the throne room, because you know it's also a place of judgment, you come in with praise. You tell him who he is. You exalt him. You honor him. You worship him. Because you are looking for what? You are looking for mercy. Because you know you are guilty of something. Or you know that you may not do what is expected of you in that space. And you may risk getting killed. Because now you are standing before the king. They would come in with praise. We come in with praise. David was a king, so he understood this. He understood that when you deal with a king, you need to know and understand that you may not have a right standing with that king, but by reason of your understanding that kings are meant to be praised. Kings are meant to be honored. When you do that, you already gain favor. Whether he likes it or not, Favor has to be released by reason of your praise. Favor has to be released. And even if you were guilty by reason of your praise, you are pardoned. By reason of your, your praise, mercy is allotted you. And because we serve a just king, because it is the law, it is the law of engagement, when you come in with praise, because here's the thing you need to understand. Angels are reapers. Angels are reapers. Which means that Satan also is a reaper. So because he is an accuser, he is constantly looking out for every wrong thing that you are doing. So that he may go and accuse you. So that you may be punished for the wrongs that you are doing. But the Lord, because he knows his tactics, he is constantly finding ways to bail you out. And all he's looking for is for you to come in agreement with him and with that which he has done to bail you out. With that which he has done to cause you to be given mercy, to be allotted mercy. So when he comes for you in this season, as he's been coming for you, with accusations, about what you have done in the past, about how much you don't qualify for that which the Lord is calling you to do, about how much you are doomed, about how much the world is coming to an end. You need to tap into that which is meant to work for you, my friend. That which gets rid of the enemy from your presence, gets rid of the enemy from your atmosphere, and that is to praise the living God. That is to pray. It's that simple. 
you just get into praise and you begin to praise him. You begin to tell him who he is in your life. Because when you do that, you are now taking the attention away from yourself. And you are now starting to reflect the one that you are praising. And because now you are reflecting the one that you are praising, which is your Lord and your Savior, which is the King of Kings, whom the Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. The minute you start to praise him, the minute you start to uplift his name, the minute you start to tell him who he is, the minute you take the attention from yourself to him and look to Jesus and talk about Jesus and praise Jesus and talk about what he has done in your life and thank him for giving you eternal life, you start to reflect him. And in his presence, my brothers and my sisters, no demon can stand the presence of the Most High God. No demon can stand his presence. So when you begin to praise him, now you are manifesting within, from within yourself because you carry his spirit. The more you begin to praise him, the more the spirit now starts to assume the fullness of your being. And because the spirit testifies of no other than Jesus Christ, you start to look like Him. You start to speak like Him. You start to manifest Him. And no demon, no demon, no principality, no power, no authority can stand in the presence of Jesus. They have to bow. The reason why they're still standing is because you are the one that is standing. The reason why they still have a say the reason why they can still plant some seed in your mind, it is because you have not died and given Jesus way into taking over your life. It is because you have not esteemed praising Him. Listen, this is not something that is relegated to praise and worship as a church on Sunday. This is a lifestyle. When you tell Him who He is, just look at David. Read the Psalms. They will give you power. They will teach you the, the, the strategies that give you victory over and over and over again. David knew it. David was not a perfect man, but he was a man after the heart of God. He stumbled here and there, but he was a man pursuing God. And what better, how much better are we beloved? Because we are now in that dispensation where Jesus Christ had, has come down, died for our sins, took them upon himself, that we may be made holy and also given us the spirit that knows how to worship him. He even said it to the Samaritan woman. He said, woman, there comes a time where it will not matter from where you worship. Because they were still hung up on who is at which place do we worship you at Jerusalem? Do, which one is the holy place where we can stand and worship the Most High God? He says, there comes a time, and indeed it is here now. Where geographically it does not matter where you are. But the one thing you need is the spirit of truth. That it may worship the Father. It may worship Him in truth and in spirit. When you allow the Holy Spirit to worship on your behalf, who knows what to say? Who knows how to say it? When you allow Holy Spirit to have His way with you, my friend, the devil has no room in your life. The devil has no room in your life. Even if he goes and tries to, to accuse you before the living God, Guess what he's met by? Your praise. He's met by your praise. And because he's met by your praise, he's sent back in shame. He's sent back in Paris. He's sent back because of your praise. But if he finds no praise, he takes root in your life. The reason why you believe him is because you are standing in your own righteousness. That is why you know it doesn't qualify. 
That is why you get fearful. Because your own righteousness does not qualify you. It does not qualify you. But his is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. The righteousness of the Son of God in whom he was pleased. When you praise him, you want to be in his space. You want to be one with him. When you come, you want to speak of him. When you get into certain spaces, you mention certain names and you get access. When you want access in all places and you don't even have to use men's name, there is a name that is above all names. How do we know when I have Jesus. Where do you come from? What qualifies you to come into the space? Jesus qualifies you. What qualifies you into those stubborn doors that God is getting ready to open in your life is the name Jesus. Only the name Jesus gives access, genuine access, into places you could have never imagined nor dreamt. You don't have to bribe anyone. You don't have to be corrupt. You just have to go by the name Jesus and access will be granted you where you are supposed to be. Access will be granted. So in this season, my friend, around you, your space, praise. You need to understand something. There is a reason why in the world, at bars, at clubs, they play music very loud, very loudly, in such a way that if there is a bar in your community, in your neighborhood, when the bar is open, you will know the bar is open, even when you are home. Why? It's very loud. Because Satan understands the power of sound. He understands the power of sound. So he bombards you with worldly music from the bars and the clubs in the morning during the days where you are not at the bars or the bars are still closed. He bombards you with what? He bombards you with social media and he bombards you with what? With mainstream media. With lies, deception that are meant to what? To steal your life, to destroy your life, to steal from you and to kill you. He tells you about how terrible everything is. That everything is going down here. So you are constantly feeding on all of that. But it is time to change my kids and my kids. I don't know where that is coming from. I guess it's coming from the Lord. He wants you to know who you are. In him. I don't know what it is. He's is a king of kings. Of kings. Which means that if you are associated with him, by Listen, Jesus is not king over kings and others. No. He's king of kings, which means you are a king. You are royalty. You just haven't awakened to it yet. But you are royalty. Satan wants you to believe that you are nothing, but you are royalty. And God wants you to shake off those lights. Every time he comes to minister those lights, don't panic. Don't throw away everything that the Lord has been saying. That's the time to stand on what the Lord has said. It is written. When you wake up in the morning, blast that praise and worship songs that you love so much. The ones that get you into the spirit realm. If there is not anything else, worship with your own mind. Praise Him. Don't even just listen to them. Praise Him. I'm telling you, this is the tool we've been given for this season. Outside praise, you will drown. You will drown because fear has been released 
into the atmosphere. It is everywhere. The minute you are outside God, you smell it comes from you. You may have muscles and all sorts of things, but it does not matter who you are. The minute you come out, the minute your head comes out from the presence of the Lord, you are met by fear. The spirit of fear and intimidation from the enemy who's telling you that you are dying, but you're not going to die. You are not going to die. You are going to live and live to accomplish the fullness. I need you to come into agreement with me. Say, I'm not going to die. And mean it and understand it. This is a situation where we come to shake away the lies to say, boy, we don't even have to say it the real way. Hey, Satan, I'm not going to die. Crying, oh, Satan, I'm not going to die. It shows that you still don't believe. You're not going to die. Not because of you and your effort, but because of whom you have believed it. Jesus is not going to call you home before you finish your assignment. He's simply not. So anytime you hear a calling that speaks death, there is not him. And that is an indication that you need to now cultivate your depth in him. You need to get more and more closer. It means that you have skewed away from him for a little bit. Because when you stay without coming into his presence, it's more like going the opposite direction from the direction set before you by him. You don't even have to do anything sinful. For the enemy to come and have access. You just have to spend a lot of time without being in the presence of God. For the enemy to come. Make it a habit. Make it a lifestyle. To always be in the presence of the Most High God. This is not for servants of God. This is for children of God. That is why we are constantly defeated. That is why we constantly want other people to pray for us. Because... We don't have a cultivated relationship with God. But you can't have people pray for you all the time. There are certain things and certain situations that call for your own faith and we are in that very time. The Lord has said it. He said casual Christians in, the, in this time are going to be casualties. Satan is not playing games in this season, beloved. You are as safe as you are in Christ. You are as safe as you are in Christ. There are two things in this season. There is nothing in between. There is life and there is death. And we've been presented with both. And believe me, to attain life and to tap into life doesn't take a lot. It just takes an individual who's made up their minds. Who is intentional about their work with the Lord. Intentional about that work with the Lord. Praise is not emotional. Oscar, today I'm not going to praise because I don't feel well. Listen, even when I have a headache, especially when I'm not feeling well, that's when I praise. I'm not going to nest that demon and entertain it by going to bed and saying, you know what, today I don't feel good, so hush, I'm going to sleep. Why? So that he can come for me even more. Satan doesn't take time out. He doesn't say you have a headache, so let me give you time out. I'll come back when you're feeling better. You need to wake up in this season. This night. Understand the tools laid before you and utilize those tools. Utilize the weapons that God has given you to be victorious in this season. To tap into the victory that has already been given unto you by Jesus Christ. You are victorious in Him. Satan has nothing on you when you are anchored in Jesus Christ. When you follow every instruction he gives you. You knew this when you went to school. How come it's a difficult thing for you to know here? You knew it very well that if, if you want to pass, you have to. You have to go to school, learn. You have to study. You can't say it's winter, I'm not going to study. You don't study because it's winter, you're going to fail. It's that simple. But you knew, for me to maintain a good grade, I need to study. For you to maintain your walk with the Lord, you need to constantly stay in Him. That means praying every day. That means worshipping every day. 
Kasido is not going to. Kasido is just special occasions. Can Kasido is not going to go where life with truth contender ministries. So now we put on our Christian hat. No, it is a lifestyle, beloved. It is a lifestyle because you have an enemy who is coming for you 24/7. You need to make sure that you are in in God or in Christ 24/7. Is that how you mean concerning praise? Then it's it's such an easy. You see, God never gives us anything complicated because He wants everyone to be saved. He wants every single one of you to be saved. So He doesn't complicate it so that it's for certain individuals only who can crack it and those that can get it. And for the rest, well, too bad. He says, "Praise me, praise me." Don't wait for attacks. Praise me all the time. Keep the enemy out of your mind by always praising me. Instead of listening to CNN, praise me. Get into my own presence and hear the true current affairs. Praise me. It's every morning. And I shall let you know what is happening. I shall give you heads up about what is happening and how you can be able to avoid all the snares of the enemy on a daily basis. Those news outlets have nothing for you, beloved. They have nothing for you. So when you're in the presence of God, don't even feel like you are wasting time. You just get in there two minutes. You can't wait to get up so that you can know what's happening around you. Everything you need to know is in here. It's in here. Today is a very special day. The last day of March. Very, very important day. There's a shift that started at midnight. To be, to be truthful, it started on the 30th. The Lord has been speaking to me a lot about the significance of the month that we're about to enter into. For those of you that don't know, this ministry was birthed exactly seven months ago. Exactly seven months ago. Last year, September. That is when the Lord released me to open this page and to start ministering to this people. His word for the time and the season that we are in. And with God, everything is always with purpose and with a certain mandate that he has in mind for us. So he's been making me very much aware of that. The fact that we are on our seventh month declaring his words to his people on social media or publicly, if I may put it that way. And the Lord has said, as we all know, seven marks the number of completion. It marks perfection. So this month that we are coming into, the month of April, we are going to see some changes. I want you to be looking out for these changes in your own personal life. The Lord said it is a month of new beginnings. And specifically, the month of the manifestation of the word we've been hearing, a more visible and a more tangible manifestation of the word that you've been listening to for the past seven months. So before I go forward, I need to, I need every single one of you to revisit the word that you have not heard on this page. When you have time, just go back to the word and listen to it because it's a very, very crucial time. Very, very crucial time. You want to make sure that you know everything the Lord has said. And one of the signs he gave me I've said this many times that the Lord gave me this word. Majority of it came in 2020. Majority of it came in 2020. And yesterday he gave a very clear sign of this. He said, I'm going to give you a very clear sign that is indeed a time of manifestation. And he spoke through me a word that he spoke. This was on the 23rd. He spoke through me a word, word for word, that he spoke 
in the same month and the same day in 2021. And he said, look up this word. When we looked it up, he said, I've, I've given you a similar word. Look it up. When we looked it up, for someone who gets a word from the Lord almost every day, 2021, February, is a very, very long time ago. There's no way I can recall what he said, especially word for word. That is how, that is why I'm always telling you, beloved, I, I never get used to it. I never get used to this word. He's constantly humbling me. And that is one of the ways I know that it cannot be my own thoughts. Even if I was to have such brilliant thoughts, to know all these things about all these nations, including our own. So we went back and we found that not only was it the same month that he spoke the same word, but it was also the same day, the 23rd. And he said, use this as a sign for me that now you have entered perfect synchronization with heaven. That is now ushering you into the manifestation of the spoken word over your life and over the season that we are in. So we are going to see a lot of things happening in this season. And I want you to keep your eyes on Jesus. I want you to remember every word he said so that those things that you see happening that are not favorable around the world, they may not shake you. That you may remember that he said those that will be found in you his favor will locate them in this very season. I'm going to read for you a word from the Lord that is timely. I need you to pay attention very, very, very much so. Thank you for this word. This word, the Lord said, the time has indeed come. The time has indeed come for this word to be made manifest. I can attest to that. It's been a very hectic two days to say the least. There's a shift happening in my spirit. The same thing that happened there when I was receiving this word. Don't be surprised when God starts to summon you to prayer more than usual. Obey Him. Even when you are in your workplace, when the Lord wants you to go into prayer during your break time, do that. Because it's a very, very crucial time. Very crucial time. God shifts a lot of things in prayer in your life and in the lives of your loved ones. And you don't know what He's shifting and you don't know who He's saving. So it is a time to come out of the norm and the normal ways of living life. There's nothing normal about this season. There may be some, some preachers and some servants that may not be telling you what's happening now, that may be telling you that it is business as usual. And I don't know, maybe some of them, the Lord has instructed them to say that. But where I stand, the Lord has made it very, very clear. And because I don't want your blood on my hands, I'm going to give you his word as he has given it unto you, that you may make informed decisions in this season, that you may live, and that your children may live. Remember, when the Lord speaks, it is not to inflict fear, but it is to preserve life. That is the difference. When the Lord speaks, he doesn't just tell you what is going to go wrong. He tells you how to avoid the wrong and how to tap into the good, and how to tap into life. When God tells you about a famine coming, he also tells you about how to tap into his provision. When God tells you that there's going to be a war, he also tells you how to avoid the war, and what you can do, and what you can say to minimize the impact of that war. When God speaks, he speaks to preserve you. When God showed up to Noah, 
He told him that a flood was coming, but he didn't end there. Noah didn't go away crying, holding his head, holding his head, and asking himself what he's going to do. What kind of a God would that be? Certainly not the one I serve. We are not meant to stay in ignorance, but at the same time, if it's God speaking, there is hope, there is solution. There are strategies of survival and thriving amidst all of that chaos that will be unfolding in your time. So you have two unfoldings and you have two sets of groups. And Satan operates through both groups. There are those that are echoing doom and gloom all over the world, on social media, on, on the news, and whatever else that is out there. Telling you that, oh, everything is so bad. Everything is bad. It's all going down. We, are, we need to pray for us to be saved that we may go to heaven. Rapture should come now. It is all bad. The world is coming to an end. No hope. No hope whatsoever. It's all going down. That is the enemy speaking. And then you have a group that also says, ah, you know, nothing is really happening. You know, things will get back to normal. That is the enemy speaking still. That you may be caught of God. That you may not prepare according to the leading of the Spirit of God. So if you are listening to either one of these two, the other one is saying, relax. Nothing is happening. Can you imagine? I'm going to use the analogy of the situation that Noah faced to give you an understanding, a very easy and simple understanding of what I'm talking about. During the time of Noah, if it was this, the enemy speaking, he could have either come in and said, there's a, there's a flood coming. Was there a flood coming? Yes. Was Noah and his family meant to drown in the flood? No. The enemy would have come and said, there's a flood coming. And all humanity is going to perish by reason of this flood, including you. Or he could have come on the other side and said, there's no flood coming. Come on, look around. Look at the weather. Statistically speaking, scientifically speaking, this place has been a desert for a very long time. Do you really think a flood is going to come? From where? Technically speaking, according to the research that has been done for the past five years, According to the research done at so-and-so university, there's no way a flood is going to come and do that. Relax. Build your houses. Don't take time wasting your time. People are busy building houses and you are busy building this stupid thing called a boat. Why are you building this thing, this ugly thing? It's taking your time. People are buying this and this and that. They're investing, they're planting, they're doing this, they're doing that. And you are busy building this ark, this ridiculously big thing. Relax. Build your life. Leave a legacy behind for your children. But God spoke. And here's how you can tell the voice of the Lord. When the Lord spoke to no one, he told him, the sin of humanity has now reached, the cup of iniquity of humanity has now reached the brim. It is now full and it has to be called that. There was wickedness in that generation serious wickedness serious abominations angels were having babies with daughters of men all sorts of things were happening there was homosexuality there was drunkenness there were all manner of sin and abomination before the Lord there was idol worship there was all manner of sin and the time had come for God to cleanse the earth 
So the Lord, before he decided to, to cleanse the earth and wipe out all manner of sin, he scouted to see, is there anything I can salvage concerning humanity and creation as a whole? And he found a man called Noah. And the Lord spoke to Noah, told him what was coming, and told him to prepare, and told him how to prepare. Gave him strict instructions on what to do. And Noah happened to the voice of the Lord. He didn't start to research on his own to find out what the climate is in his region and how, whether it is possible for a flood to come and all of He trusted the Creator who knows all things because He created everything we see. Our research is always limited to what we know and what we see with our eyes and what we observe with our natural eyes as humanity. No matter how robust it may look, it is always going to have shortcomings because we do not have the lens of the Creator and we don't have the understanding and the calendar and the timetable of events of the Creator. So a wise man like Noah listened to the Creator. He didn't try to go and consult with the scientists of the time here to confirm whether this word is viable or not. He checked, is it the voice of the Lord? Yes, I'm going to prepare. I don't care how I'm going to look. I don't care whether I'm going to look like I'm stagnant and people are progressing. I am going to use my resources to prepare that me and my family may survive what is coming. And then after everything has transpired, then we will build again and build something that will last, something that will not be wiped away by the flood. He knew and he understood what needed to be done. The Lord spoke to him, he told him what was coming, but he didn't just stop there, because he's a merciful God, and he wants his people to make it. God was not enjoying what was happening, but a cleansing had to be done to the world. And so Noah did what a wise man would do. And in this time, God is not interested in saving eight people. God is not interested in eight people. God is interested in the fullness of humanity. Anyone who will happen to him. Anyone. Anyone. Beloved. You qualify. I qualify. God is looking for those that will listen and do. Those that are not only hearers of the word, but are also doers of the word that they hear. How many of you take communion on a daily basis since the Lord gave us that instruction? Some of you are like, you, get to, you, you just have to take it once. I have to take it three times a day. Three times. And I don't take it lightly. I don't take it lightly. Because I understand every instruction the Lord gives me is what is going to preserve me. It's what is going to preserve me. Now, if you come with theologic, theological background and you're trying to, to, to find out and understand from your own understanding, or you come with religious ways that you have adopted, as the law and the ways of God that are fixed, that are not subject for God to work through and give us instructions that are due for the season, you are in trouble. That is why I always say, don't take my word. I'm not saying you should just take my word for it and just write with it. But engage the Holy Spirit of truth. And when you engage the Holy Spirit of truth, there is no confusion with the Spirit. It is one. It speaks the same thing all the time. So when He has propelled you to listen to Him via this particular ministry, it means that that instruction applies to you. It applies to your life. And you need to hearken to the voice of the Lord concerning your life. How many of you are following through on that instruction? 
how many of you are following through on the instructions that God has, has given you concerning certain things that you need to sell in your life. And allow him to instruct you on what to invest in. On what your act looks like. Because whatever it is that God is going to tell you to do, that is your act. How many of you have happened to the voice of the Lord when he told you to leave the place that you are at and to relocate to another place? How many of you are listening to me? And some of you, your relocation time may have not come yet. But best believe, if you are in the will of God, He is already making preparations and getting you ready for that move. So that the appointed time, when it comes, you are ready to make the move. I'm going to begin the word of the Lord. Listen very, very attentively. Please. The word of the Lord says, the storm approaches. Put on the whole armor. He says, the storm approaches. Put on the whole armor. Put on the armor. Shields up. Swords out. Those of you that don't know the armor of God, please go and read about it. In Ephesians chapter 6, it will bless you. I know that I have promised to do a mini teaching concerning the armor. But even in that, very, in that very chapter, Paul goes on to describe and to explain what the shield is, what the sword is, what the belt is, what the helmet is, all of these things. He explains them. So please go on and listen to that. But here, the Lord highlights, he says, put on the whole armor. But then he goes on to highlight the shield and the sword to show you the importance of these two. And the sword is, it speaks of the word, the report of Jesus, not any other word, not just the word, but the report of Jesus concerning your life. The report of Jesus. And he says, shield up. The shield speaks of your faith. Your faith that whatever he spoke, no matter what I am seeing with my natural eyes, I know it looks bad. I know how it looks around the world and everything that is happening around the world. But it is not going to touch me. Why? Because he said so. Not because I have any other explanation. I don't have to get deep about it. Because Jesus says so. Because I am in him. Because I have given him license to take over my life. Because he's my Lord. Because I take every instruction he gives me. And I do it. So I know I am in him. By reason of following him. I am in him. And for that reason, I have faith that I will make it into the next. I have faith and I believe that I shall be counted after all of this is over and the dust settles. I will stand. I will still be standing. That is your shield. You hold it up. As the enemy advances with arrows, you hold it up. Those arrows come in the form of what you see around you. What he constantly says, they come and they tell you, you are about to be taken out. The Lord says, take your shield, hold it up and quench those arrows with the shield of faith. When you stand on the sword, the spoken word, you quench the arrows of the enemy. Whatever that may try to come your way to snatch the life out of you, to snatch away your dreams, to annihilate your dreams and to tell you that whatever the Lord said, it is not going to come to pass. Whether those arrows come in the form of accusations that now you are old, do you really think this can still happen? Take up your shield of faith and stand and say it is written. Thus saith the Lord. 
when you take up your sword of the word, you believe him with your shield, and you speak that which you believe in the form of the sword of the word. Listen, the enemy may come with literal swords. He may come with ammunition that you see with your own eyes. But for a man and a woman that stands on the word, Gideon and the 300 won a fight against hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. They won 300 men. It wasn't because they fought so well in the physical. It was by reason of what they stood on. Every instruction God gave Gideon and the 300 they did. And the host of heaven fought on that day. The host of heaven fought on that day. I'm going to tell you some things that should help you during this time. When nation comes against nation, you need to stand on this word and you will not fail it. Believe me, there is something in you that if you are allowed to be awakened, you will be shocked who you truly are. When the inner man of the Holy Spirit takes you over and now brings out the soldier in you when the soldier has to come out, you will be shocked how much you can stand when the Spirit has his way with you. You will be shocked how much you can still be sober and calm when everything else around you is going haywire. You will be shocked that you need to be in him. If you are not in him, you will faint. So my approach and my, my concern in this time that we are in, my assignment over your life in this time is to bring out the soldier in you. And the soldier in you is one who has his whole armor. The word of the Lord continues. Remember he said the storm approaches. And then he says, put on the whole armor. Put on the armor. Shields up. Sword out. Come. Come. They come. Hear me. You will see them for their true colors. They come out. Fear not. Vicious. They come vicious. Then he says, tents go up. Tents go up. I've said this many times. It is not a time to build. It is a time of tents. I will say it again. It is not a time to build. It is a time of tents. Now your tent may look different from my tent, but nonetheless there are tents. Some of you are busy trying to use your, your resources to settle. And God is busy telling you to do the opposite. And is busy telling you to do something that is different. Something that may seemingly look like it is not an investment. The Lord is saying it is a time of tents. Not only because you are going to be moving. And not only because it is a time of transition. But here is the thing you need to understand about a time where there is wealth transfer that is about to be done. Listen, even the enemy knows this very well. A time of war is a time of wealth transfer. I'm going to say that again. A time of war is a time of wealth transfer. Now, the world knows this and understands it very well, but the church does not. The, most, the people that get wealthy, and right about now, the world is ready to get wealthy. Some of them are already cashing in from COVID-19 at your own expense. They've cashed in billions, if not trillions, already. And they haven't, they feel like they haven't gotten enough yet out of your pockets. So they're still cashing in some more. And the Lord is saying, this is meant for you. But you need to be aware and you need to be awake. You cannot cash in when you have fainted. You cannot. You cannot cash in when, when you, 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 are, you, you are literally traumatized. Wondering whether you are going to die or not. You can't think properly in that state. But when you have the whole armor on and you have the helmet of salvation. When the enemy tries to come and tell you, hey, you are, you are about to die, you are about to die. There is no, literally, there is no room for you to hear any of that. Because life has been 
given and life has been spoken into your mind and into your spirit man. So because you are alive, you are able to still see in a mist chaos. You are able to still come up with strategies as bullets are flying in the air. God is still able to speak. Why? Because you are not part of that chaos. You are in Him. And so you are in a stable place. You are in a calm place where you see things differently because He is in the highest of places. So your perception of what is happening is different from someone that is not in Him. And the Lord said, this is the time for you to catch me. This time that we are in but the enemy wants you to be preoccupied with everything else. He wants you to believe that you, you are about to die. So you need to just run around, helter skelter, not knowing where you are going because you are running to save your life. And when you do that, he comes and he takes your belongings and he gets a richer. By the time the dust settles, if you are still alive, you have nothing to your name. When God got ready to give wealth, to our father Abraham. He told him, leave your father's house. And what was Abraham dwelling on? Tents. Why? Because God was taking him from place to place for him to get the fullness of his inheritance for himself and his descendants and his children. And if Abraham was satisfied with the first place that God took him to, he wouldn't have been able to get the fullness of his inheritance. If he settled too soon, he would have not been able to walk into the fullness of his inheritance. The Lord says it's a time of tents. Tents go up. And then he goes on to say the storm approaches immediately. That means it is, it is going to happen suddenly. So we have to live ready for what is coming in the season. We have to live ready. Don't say, oh, it's taking too long. You better pray that it takes long. You better pray. Because many are not yet ready for what is about to transpire. Many are not ready. So you better pray that it doesn't come as soon as what the word is saying. Because he says it comes immediately. What does this call for? This calls for us to cut down on certain things in our lives that are unnecessary and start spending time with God. Beloved, Kasamaro, the time to be merry and to do whatever we want will come. It will come. When Noah finished his assignment, when they made it to the other side, during the time where he was supposed you don't read anywhere in the Bible where during the time he was supposed to be building the ark whether he got drunk from wine you don't hear that the only time Noah got drunk of wine was after the flood when now he had finished his assignment and he was ready to go home anytime because now he had finished his assignment. But majority of you, you, you still want to hold on to this era. And you are buying into the lies of the enemy that, you know, the minute the, 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 the what do you call it? The lockdowns are lifted. Go back to life as usual. You are going to festivals. You are going to all sorts of things that are meant to distract you. You are eating and drinking and being merry, being fattened for the day of slaughter. And you are not you are not able to discern the time and the demands of the time that you are in. You need to wake up and you need to get busy in preparation. The word of the Lord continues. He says, they come. They come. And then he says, they are reinforced from all corners. They are reinforced from all corners. Who are they? These are unseen spirits, principalities and powers. 
that come against you and me in the form of human beings that have given themselves to be used by Satan. They come as terrorists. They come as leaders, corrupt leaders. They come as those that are used by the enemy to come against you with manufactured illnesses, diseases that are meant to take your life. They come in all manner of guises and disguises. But the Lord says, fear not. When he says they come from all corners, it means that you're going to see all sorts of things happening at the same time. All manner of chaos in the world happening at the same time. But the Lord says, you don't have to be part of the chaos. You don't have to be part of that unfolding. There is another option. The Lord continues to say, this. now this is a very important part. It will show you the intensity of the time and the hour, the intensity of what is about to take place in this time. The Lord says, this is the third phase. This is the third phase, which means this thing has been coming in phases. You may not be aware of it, but the enemy had a plan that is unfolding exactly the way that it's supposed to unfold. Only God has saved us from the plans of the enemy. If God didn't intervene and interrupt the flow of his plan against humanity, it was over before it began for us. The Lord says, this, the most fierce phase, the one that we are entering into is the most fierce. And then he says, hear me, this war is the first one that leads to Armageddon. He's not saying it is Armageddon, but he's saying it is the one that leads. Now, you can't even downplay it because you don't even know the intensity of Armageddon when it does come at its own time. But when I heard this, my friend, I knew that it is no longer time to play games with my Christian walk. It is no longer time to play church. It is time to be the church. Because casual Christians shall be casualties in this time. And I pray with everything in me that none of you, in fact, I speak it. I declare it by the authority invested over my life by Christ Jesus himself. None of you will be casualties in this season. You will not. Whether you like it or not, you are going to comply with the ways of the Lord. Whether you like it or not, by reason of you having prayed for his will to be done in your life, you are bound by that prayer. You are bound by that covenant. And you are going to follow every instruction, knowingly or unknowingly, that he's given you in this hour to ensure that you make it into the new year. The word continues. He says, be sober. Be sober. You cannot survive this war without me. Stay in me. Remember who you are. True Christianity, let us remember what it was all about. Before we made it about cars, before we made it about houses, before we made it about marriage, before we made it about a job, before we made it about promotion, before we made it about a baby, before we made it about all these other things that God is going to give you more than what you could have ever imagined or dreamt. He says, forget about all of that because I'm still going to give it to you anyway. I am the one that has brought you into this world and I know what you need in this world to accomplish your assignment. I know that you need resources. I know that you need to have a child. You need someone that will take over. Someone that you will pass the baton to. I know that. I know what you need. I know that you need provision. I know that you need a car. You need a house. You need shelter. I know you need all of these things. And I will give them to you. 
And I don't want you to be worrying about those things. I want you to keep your eyes fixated on me. I want you fixated on me. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. Satan has distracted you. Now you have your eyes like this. Even when you are crying prayer, you are crying for material things that are still coming your way. You have no idea what is happening and what is coming against you. Some of you, you are going to die holding on to that car. God forbid. The Bible says, what, what profits a man to gain the whole world? The whole world. Even if you were to gain the whole world, what profit is it to you when you lose your soul? What is it going to profit you when you lose your soul? We need to realign our priorities. We need to remember who we are. We need to remember what it's all about. It is about your soul. There is a serious fight for your soul. Satan doesn't mind giving you everything that you want. You want a car, he will give it to you. You want a man, he will give you a man. You want a woman, he will give you a woman. You want money, he will give you money. Make it rain. You will make it rain. You want the most expensive car, he can give it to you. As long as he gains your soul. That is how precious and how valuable your soul is. Is willing to give it all or deprive you of it all so that you curse God and you say God doesn't exist. If I'm going through this situation, if I'm not getting a job, God doesn't exist or God doesn't love me. That's what he wants you to say. But a child of God in all seasons of life, they praise him. In all seasons of life, they know that he is God and he is good. In all seasons of life, they look to him. They focus on him and their assignment as per given by him. Because they know that life is in his hands. That is the place God wants us to go back to, to himself. He wants us to go back into him. To allow him to be responsible for us. To allow him to have a say when we get what and how we get it and when. He says, it is time to allow me to be king and lord over your life as you have said it. Now it's time to live it. And when I'm king over your life, I decide where you live. I decide what you wear. I decide what you eat. I decide everything concerning you as your Lord. The word continues. He says, remember who you are. Do not be shaken. They are coming with their agenda. I've said it many times. There are two agendas unfolding in this time. And the one that is going to prevail is the agenda of the Most High God. Why? Because He is God. If there is anything He's pushing, that thing is going to prevail. No matter what it may look like, is God and he's going to have his way. So the Lord says they are coming and they are coming strong with their agenda. But he says do not be shaken. He says they are coming with their agenda. So am I. Which means that he also has his own agenda. And he says when you want to be victorious fixate your eyes on my agenda as God. You won't even have to know what is happening because it won't even touch you. Why? Because you are in me. You are in my cycle of life. So the things that are unfolding in this in Satan's cycle of life, they don't affect you. They don't touch you. Bombs may be going off, but they don't affect you. Famine may be coming, but it doesn't affect you. Why? Because I'm telling you, I'm constantly telling you what to do. I'm constantly telling you where to be. Where is going to be safe for you to be? I know where the bomb is going to blow up. So I'm going to tell you where to be. Where I know no bomb is going to come. I know where there's going to be famine. Where there won't be any food. Where there will be chaos. And I also know where I have made sure. 
that no pestilence, no canker worms, no devil is going to touch provision in that land or in that place. For I have designated it for you to be fed in the season. I know as God. I am not taken by surprise over anything that happens. I knew it before I said, let there be light. I knew everything that was going to take place. So if you want to know me and you want to survive this season, stay in me. Take everything I tell you and do it, and you shall live. He goes on to say, hear me. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Days of fulfillment. Do not forget. Hallelujah. The Lord continues to say, troops march forth. Troops march forth. For your commander is you think you have seen an army. You think the Russian army is robust. You think the US army is robust. You think North Korean army. You think Japan. All of these combined, my friend, they have nothing on the host of heaven. And the Lord has said the host is here. For those that are looking for that help to come from on high, the Lord is saying the host is here. And I've said it many times. No tank, no manner of ammunition, no military weapon, no matter how advanced it may look to us, none of them have anything on the heavenly army. None of them. It's like child's play. So if you want true protection, find yourself in the commander of the heaven's armies. That is Jesus Christ himself. And none of these things will touch you. And you will see the salvation of the Lord in your life. He continues to say, take this instruction, this one instruction. Do not break rank. Do not break ranks. I've said this many times. The Lord says, start cell groups. Start cell groups. Listen, you cannot stand in this time alone. You cannot. You cannot. That's why I said the Lord is bringing us back to true Christianity. True Christianity is a returning to the body of Christ. Even Jesus Christ, when he was in the earth, he was constantly with the disciples, breaking bread with them. Of course, now and then he would go away and go and speak to the Father. But majority of the time, he was with the disciples. And he would teach and encourage them in the ways of the Lord. God is saying, they would even eat together. God is saying in this season, He is bringing back that kind of, that kind of fellowship. So the Lord said, you need to start some groups. And those that are willing, He will connect you with your group. He will connect you with those that you are supposed to be communing with. And the Lord is going to move in your midst. He's going to move in your midst. He's going to fortify you for the time that is coming. And here's another thing you need to understand. Because of the time and the hour that we are in, God has group. These are like groups, military groups. And every single one of you carries a special anointing and a special assignment and a special function and a special gift. That is necessary for the whole group. You are not all going to come with the same gift and the same abilities. God is putting you together knowing very well who is strong in what and who is able to do what, how. Even in terms of your physical resources, God knows who he's going to put in whose space and how they're going to come together and help each other in this season to survive and to thrive going into the new year. So pray about it so that God may, may point you to your tribe. The word of the Lord continues. He says, hear me, do not break ranks. So you are responsible for one another. And when anyone goes astray, the Lord is saying, do not say it is on them and I'm not going to. It is none of my business. He says it is your business. Because if you are going to be holding shields, 
One of the things about, there's a movie called 300 that I watched a long time ago, and the Lord reminded me of that movie. One of the ways they survived many battles that in other time, in, in any other given situation, they wouldn't have been able to survive was because they never, they never ever broke rank. So anytime their enemies would advance and arrows would be shot in the air, what they would do is they would come together and those that are on the borders, they would put their shields out. And then those that are in the middle, they would put their shields out. So there would be no room for arrows to enter. There would be no room. So if one of you goes astray and you tell yourself it is on them, I have Listen, that means a window, a door has been opened for the enemy to enter. The Lord said it to them, he said, I have, he said it in prayer, he said, Lord, I have lost none. Father, I have lost none of those that you gave me, except for the son of perdition. Who? Judas. Because Judas, it was already written of him what his destiny would be. But for the rest of them, he said, Lord, I lost none. I lost none. So you are responsible for your neighbor. You are responsible for one another in this season. When God puts it in your heart to pray for that person, pray for them. Don't say, well, they're entitled to their own opinions and their own decisions. So if they want to choose death, well, that is not the heart of a child of God. And if you do that, it, it ends up costing you as well and your work. So the Lord says, do not break ranks in this season. Do not. You shall have victory all the time. I love this. He says, no matter what you've just heard about storms and vicious enemies coming for you, wars and rumors of wars and all of these things, he says, you shall have victory all the time. Not sometimes but all the time hallelujah to that he says see my wall see my wall hallelujah I'm, I'm skipping over some things that I'm not supposed to give today so bear with me on that and the Lord continues to say 2021 I start my performance from 2021, the Lord said, from 2021 until now, but now you are going to see it more. He says, giants fall and giants rise. There is an exchange of power that is currently taking place. And that is the reason for all the shakings that you are seeing. Because there is an exchange of power that is taking place. God wants you to, once more, be the head and not the tail. You've been the tail for too long. And God is saying, all these shakings that are taking place are meant to give you the time and the season to become the head that you were supposed to be all along. I want to make you that head. So there's a fight because the enemy is, is not just going to hand it to you. There's a fight, but here's the good news. I've already won it. So if you are in me, victory is yours already. Hallelujah. I continue with the word of the Lord. Are we together so far, beloved? We might take longer than usual, but we need to bear with you. Because of the season and the time that we are in, just bear with you. We'll try to, uh, to cut this, this broadcast into two. Or even uh, take out the first part so that it goes straight into the word. Once we upload it. The word of the Lord says, aerosols. This was on the 26th of this month. Aerosols. And when I checked out what aerosols are, the same night he gave me this word. I was seeing an aeroplane, and this aeroplane was depositing what looked like smoke into the atmosphere. And the Lord said, aerosols. This is a suspension of fine solid particles or liquid droplets in air. Or another guess, examples are fog, mist, or steam, or whatever the case may be. So when the Lord said aerosols, and then I had that uh, that vision in the mind, when I shared it uh, with my team in the morning, 
they told me about uh, this idea that Bill Gates is funding, where they want to uh, cool the climate with, is it sulfur dioxide? I, I said to be corrected, sulfur, sulfur something. I think it's sulfur dioxide. After they observed uh, a volcanic eruption that was took place, and then there was for a few months, uh, the the climate in that area was very cool by reason of the sulfur dioxide that was deposited into the atmosphere by reason of that explosion or by reason of that eruption of that volcanic uh, activity. And I believe that majority of you heard when the Lord gave a prophetic word life uh, a couple of weeks ago, if not last week, concerning Bill Gates. And he said, you will not commit, I believe he said you will not commit suicide. I said to be correct. He said you will not commit suicide. Because here's the thing, a lot of attempts and a lot of projects concerning this new agenda and concerning the great reset, majority of it is an abomination before the Lord. And it is men doing the same thing that they did during the time of Babel and the Tower of Babel. They used everything that was the opposite of what God had availed men to use. They tried to play God in other ways. In other words, and the Lord is in this time going to judge that very step. So we need to pray for these individuals. If there's still time for them to repent from what they're doing and to withdraw from these projects that are that they are doing or that they are currently engaged in, which are coming against the natural plan of God or the natural way of climate change. Because here's the thing we need to understand. There is climate change that is already taking place. The one that they are calling a natural disaster in climate. This is the Lord's doing because there has to be a shift. We are in that time where the shift is taking place. Now, as humanity, you cannot know how things operated before you came here because you, you, you just came a few years ago. Even if you are 100 years old, you, are not, you haven't lived long enough to know the ways of the Lord and the cycles of life that have been set in motion by the Most High God. So even if you have done studies that for, for the past 400 years, we've never seen ice melting in this place, so because of the rising sea levels, we have to do something to cool the sun and to cool the atmosphere. And then you come against the natural phenomenon of climate change. You are messing with God and you are calling for the attention of God, but not the right type of attention. So we need to pray for humanity in this time. For everything that they are, they are doing that is against the will of God to stop because those that are going to be affected are those that are in those areas. When the wrath of God comes down to smack down those current or those modern towers of Babel, it is going to affect those in those places. And speaking of which, there is a current project that is being started in this nation. And I need you to pray because the Lord is not pleased with that project. There is more concerning that project than meets the earth. There is more concerning it. Hazila Ilasu. You need to understand that this global agenda, this reset that has been set in motion, all countries are supposed to comply with it. And now they're getting ready to set their stations in all countries. Now, you may be told certain things as the, the public that this is what is happening and this is what we are introducing and it is going to help and it is going to do this and it, it is going to help our country to, to come into uh, alignment with the digital age that we are in. And they will season it with, it will eradicate unemployment. But when you, you carry the lens, of the most high God. When you see with his eye, you are able to see through all of that. And you are able to see the true agenda. Prayer is so powerful, beloved. If we are to stand together 
and pray against anything that they want to initiate in this nation that is an abomination before the Most High God. If we come together and stand against any bricks that are meant to build this global tower of Babel in our nation, and we destroy it before it even commences by saying no, as we have a right as citizens of this nation, you have a say. Your word carries weight in the spirit realm. Because this is your nation. If we stand together against these things, our country will not experience too much of the wrath that is coming, the judgment that is coming against the current reset agenda that has been set in motion. The word of the Lord continues and he says, Benjamin Netanyahu, come, come, come. On the 9th, on the 11th of September last year, the Lord had mentioned him again. This is this week. But we retrieved a word where the Lord had mentioned this man. He used to be a prime minister in Israel. And the Lord said his mission and his assignment is not yet done. So we're going to see him. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him during this unrest as it worsens certain leaders that God has called for in this season. You are going to see them coming into power at this very time. Why? Because those that have assumed places of power that are not supposed to be in those places, they will only sit there as long as the demands that come with that assignment are not yet there. As long as the seat is nice and cozy, they will sit. But remember what the Lord said. He said, the kind of heat that is coming in this season, it only calls for the right men that have been called for certain positions to take those places because they are the ones that carry the grace to be able to stay their nation during the time of turmoil and a time of shaking like the one that we're entering into in this time. And for Israel, the Lord is saying his man is Benjamin Netanyahu. And we are going to see this man resurfacing in the political arena in this time that we are in. The word of the Lord continues and he says, Deaf ears hear, they shall hear. Impossible made possible. The Lord is saying, in this season you will hear him. You will hear him by the Spirit. The Spirit will help you to understand even things that you normally wouldn't be able to understand immediately. But the Lord is saying, in this season, you will hear him and you will hear him well. Why? Because grace has been allotted. Empowerment has been allotted you to be able to understand quickly. That you may be able to run with the word and be able to benefit from the word. That which is, you are supposed to profit from the word in this very season. So I speak that over your life. That in whatever area that you have not been able to hear the Lord. May you hear him from this day going forward in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever type of deafness that the enemy had inflicted you with in this time, may your ears be plucked out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever that had been put in your ears for you to not hear the word of the Lord, for the word of the Lord to bounce off of you without you having an understanding of the word. I speak skill to understand and I speak the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to hear the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord continues and he says, Masala Musa, I am. Are Masala Musa. I just Masala Musa in synthesis. So that I can give. If those of you that know and understand the exact meaning in English, please type it down. That the rest may know and understand what the Lord is putting to a stop. He says, Masala Musa, I am. Kiabuwa, Kilimuti, Kari. Masala Musi, I am. Full stop. I'm not going to add to that word. You will be able to understand it as it starts to unfold. The word of the Lord continues and he says, The gem, the honey, is preserved for the true seekers. The Lord is saying in this season, 
there is jam and honey. When we talk about honey, we're talking about we're not talking about sustenance. Milk is sustenance. But honey speaks of abundance. Honey speaks of the good things. The abundance of the Lord. Can you imagine abundance in a time of famine? That is exactly what the Lord is doing in this season. And he's saying this gem, this honey, is preserved for the true seekers. For those that are not just drizzling Jesus Christ, seasoning their worldly lifestyles with Jesus. Those that are living for him. Those that are hungry for him. And here's the thing, my friend. You can start today and still partake of that which the Lord is availing in this time. You don't have to have walked with him 20 years, 30 years, 10 years, 5 years, 2 years to be a partaker. You just have to be a true seeker. True seeker. That's all you have to be. And you can make up your mind in this day. I told you at the beginning of this broadcast what it means to be a true seeker. Is when Christianity is no longer a thing you do. It's your lifestyle. It's when talking to God is no longer a thing you do occasionally. But it's an everyday lifestyle. Because as your father, he is constantly in your presence. And you are constantly talking to him. You are constantly listening to him and following whatever it is that he tells you to do. That is a true seeker. When you constantly ask for his opinion concerning everything in your life. When you don't just do whatever you want to do and then go back to him to put a stamp on your own ideas. When you lay aside your own ideas, you lay aside your own ambitions, you lay aside your own plans, you lay aside everything that comes as your own thought or the thoughts of the enemy. You lay aside all of it and grab hold of the kingdom by seeking his ways, seeking the path that he has in store for you by listening to his teachings, by doing whatever he tells you and instructs you to do, by allowing yourself to be guided by his Holy Spirit. That is a true seeker. And that is the one that the Lord is speaking about when he says honey is preserved for the true seekers. Not for those that perform for men. Because we have many that perform for men. When you are around other believers, that's when you become a believer. But in your own private time, in your everyday life, you live a worldly life. You are not cheating God. You are cheating yourself. Because he sees all things. Even when you, you, you go into the bathroom where nobody sees you, and you start watching God, he sees. Your roof doesn't keep him away. He sees all things. So whatever you're struggling with, this is a time to lay it before the altar. This is a time to lay it before the Father and say, Lord, help me. Because I want to be a true seeker. I want to be a true Christian in this season. That I may not only partake of eternal life, but I may partake of everything that you have in store for me in this season. Because here's the thing you need to understand. Once the honey and the gem is released, it won't be something that is private. It will be very clear who has a honey and who doesn't have honey. So you can be able to hide where you truly stand with the Lord now. But once rewards are start raining down, rewards will be able to distinguish us and let you know who's a seeker and who's not a seeker. Because on a Sunday, we can all cry. We can all roll on the floor. We can all fall when the, when the preacher or the pastor or the prophet, the apostle is praying for you. We can all pray in tongues. We can all cry in the presence of the Lord. We can all know the hymns of the Most High God. But how many of you are seekers? Time will tell in this season. And here's the thing. When I say that, it is not from a place of judgment. It's from a place of helping you to be true to yourself and your work. To be real. Because here's the thing. God wants 
as many of you as possible to walk into this abundance because it is too much. It is too much. There is no lack in the kingdom of God. There is lack in the world by reason of greedy men and women who take more than what is meant for them. But when you tap into the kingdom of light, no matter how many greedy people are there in your nation or in the world, there's still too much supply from your heavenly Father. And no matter how many of you become seekers and get to experience this honey, there's still more than enough for many more that will come to the Lord and become true seekers to also partake of. So we are not in a race and in a competition of who is going to be a true seeker. Oh, I'm a true seeker and you're not a true seeker. So the honey is for me. It is not a competition. There's no need to compete. And there's no need to hide the ways and the teachings you have learned from others that they may also become true seekers because you are scared that if they seek, there won't be enough honey for you. Spread the word. Pray earnestly for your brothers and sisters to become true seekers. Empower one another in the church. When you see that someone is, is not living for the Lord, but they come to church, they are faithful in showing up, but they are not faithful in their work. Help them. Don't keep silent and say, well, that's their choice. Help them. That they may also partake of the goodness of the Lord in this season. There's more than enough, beloved. For more, more than enough for all of you. You are going to eat and be satisfied. He said it himself. These are not my words. He said it. He said, in this season, I will do for my people what their governments have failed to do. And my people shall eat and be satisfied. He did it when he was on earth. They brought their little fish and their bread. He presented it before the Father of Abundance. And he said, Father, I thank you. Why? Because he knew it was already done. And then he gave the people to eat. The people ate more than enough. And they still left leftovers there. They left leftovers. We're talking about more than 15,000, 20,000 people. God fed them in one day. And there was more than enough left, leftovers after they were offered. God is more than equal. Why are you panicking? Do you not have a father in heaven who owns all things? But when you act like an orphan, you ought to panic. But if you know that you have a father who is not taken by surprise by any of these things, you will know that there is a place for you. And there is more than enough provision for you and everybody else that you know. That God is calling you to bring to the kingdom. That they may also partake of the goodness of their father. Because they are also his children. The word of the Lord continues and he says, a muscle, a muscle. Tell my people, give me your last and I will give you my all. Give me your last and I will give you my all. And I've said this many times. Anytime when the Lord says, give me your last and I will give you my all. God is not only talking about giving to the church. Because I know we panic a lot when we hear about giving and we start to think they want they want our money, they want this, they want that. Yes, there may be thieves out there. But in the word of the Lord, the spirit of God instructs you what to do. I've said this to many people that we are in a time where God is going to cause you to sell some things and then tell you what project to invest in himself. There might have been maybe something that you've been seeing trending in the world as maybe the kind of business you should venture into. But God has something else in mind for you to do all together. And he knows that whatever package you're going to be getting from your job, 
whatever package you're going to be getting from insurance, whatever package you're going to be getting from wherever place, that package is a seed for you to sow in good ground according to the instructions of the Lord. If he tells you, venture into this type of business, don't look at what is happening in the world and say, oh Lord, it's not going to work. There's a war breaking. There's instability. God knows. What is going to be in demand? When? How? He knows. He knows. Some of you hotel ali bulagi mouse. Oscar niya kasi mouse, especially in this season. Oscar siya. Sige, kawa niya kasi kasi mouse in this season. And here's the thing, I was see concerning the mouse. There's after the Lord gave me that word, He reminded me of a dream He gave me. There was this tuck shop that was well known in Blue Town where I grew up. And I was seeing this tuck shop. And I was seeing this tuck shop with the kind of stock that you would see in a general dealer. The tuck shop was more like a front, but there was more that they had stored up elsewhere to make sure that there is constant uh, supply from the tuck shop. It's more like they had opened their mini uh, warehouse where they stored up the surplus so that there is a constant flow. Why? Because I've mentioned that during this time, because God is also dealing with monopoly of hyper supermarkets and those that have invaded and swallowed up the, the opportunities that God had availed in small towns and villages for the people to be empowered through them. That is the tax shops. God is going to be dealing with these hypermarkets or supermarkets in this season. He's going to be closing them down to give way for the tap shops to be empowered once again in this season. So, don't do it if God didn't put it in your heart as that which you're supposed to do. Don't covet it if it's not for you. But if it is for you, and Satan has been telling you, ah, there's no way you're going to be making money out of this. The Lord says you are going to make more money than you could have ever dreamt of. Because the idea is bigger than what you think. And the people that are going to be buying from you, it is the same market that had been, that had been uh, given over to the hypermarkets and the supermarkets. The Lord is saying the same market is redirecting it to the tax shops. So those of you that are called to that, even bread, he spoke a lot about bread as well. If you can manage to buy something that allows you to make a lot of bread, to be able to supply a sufficient amount of bread in your tax shop, do that, invest in that. It will greatly, greatly benefit you and profit you in this very season that you are in. I know that Nowadays, it was next to impossible to even sell bread in tax shops when Chopis is right next to you selling bread at 4 pula, 5 pula, or 6 pula. There's no way you can be selling bread at 10 pula. No one is going to be buying your bread. And another thing the Lord said, he said, do not try to get rich in this season by overly pricing your commodities. You will not tap into the favor of the Lord if you do that. The Lord says, give their prices and I will bless you abundantly if you do that. I will bless you abundantly. Some of you, God is going to tell you specific things to supply. And he's going to tell you buy this thing in large quantities. In seriously large quantities and store it up. When the Lord says that, do that. I know it looks like you are gambling but if it is the Lord speaking, it is not a gamble. It is a done deal. And when that thing comes into demand, you will be the very person that everyone looks to, to be supplied with that. So like I said, we're in a season of wealth transfer. As much as wars and all of these things are happening, the chaos is happening, it's meant for you to bring in the wealth. It's meant for you to bring in the wealth. And this wealth is not for you alone. Those of you that God is giving ideas in this season, the wealth is not for you alone. Many, in, even in this very nation, billionaires are going to come out of this, this season that we are in. 
that God is not making you a better man for yourself. He said, I, will, I the Lord, will do for my people what the government has failed to do. How is he going to do that? Through you and me. When he empowers you to have a multi-billionaire company and you get to employ majority of the people in your nation and you, you, you pay those people accordingly, you give them the necessary benefits that, that, that are due to them. You are doing what? You are allowing God to use you as a steward of his riches that you may do what we call fair distribution of wealth, which is something that we don't see today. He's not saying that you are going to be parting your parting away with your billions to the people, but you are surely going to give them that fair share as per that which they are giving or that which they are contributing to your company. And when you do that, my friend, God will continue to bless you and to bring more resources into your life. The word of the Lord continues and he says, trails, trails, trails trails. Did I not say careful mistake, careless mistakes to my enemies? Trails of your movement will be traced. Trails. The Lord is saying that his enemies in this season are going to be sloppy. They are going to leave behind trails of what they've been up to. They are going to be caught red-handed in other words. So the Lord says trails of what they've been up to shall lead back to them. Then the Lord goes on to say, Deben July, Deben July, unmasking, unmasking. Those of you that may be planning to go for this event, those of you that may be planning to go for this event, for this event, pray about it and hear what the Lord has to say. Because he's been mentioning it a lot in prayer in this season. And as we know that we're in a season of of a sudden, sudden release and exposures and a lot of things happening and the enemy trying to maximize on the time that he has left. You have to be very, very careful. You cannot put pleasure above all, above your life. So the Lord says, unmasking is coming to Devon July. And then he goes on to say, Kentucky. This is a southern state in the United States of America, I believe. He says, Kentucky, a slave regime found out. A slave, a slave regime found out. Kentucky. And then the Lord goes on to say, Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone, not this time. Not this time. Intercessors, stand, pray, pray. Less impact, less impact, pray. The Lord is saying, whatever the enemy is planning against Sierra Leone, this time around, it will not play out the way that it played out in the past. The Lord is saying it will not play out the way it did in the past. God is going to frustrate the enemy in this season in a major, major way. And we are meant to pray, beloved. I've said it many times. If they advance against them and you leave them and you don't pray for your brothers and your sisters in North, America, in North Africa, it is coming to you. If you don't pray for the United States or any other nation that God is calling us to pray for in this season and you say it doesn't affect me, it is going to affect you. So the minute we pray and we stop them in their tracks, then there's going to be less impact and many lives will be saved in this season. The word of the Lord continues. He says, dollar sign is mine. Receive the true dollar sign. I've said this before as a prophetic utterance from the Lord that he said the dollar is not dying, but the dollar is getting a rebirth. So when you see it going down and it looks like there's not going to be a recovery of the dollar, know very well and remember the word of the Lord that it is only dying to be resurrected with a new mark, with a new sign, with a new understanding and representing a different kingdom and that is the kingdom of light. You are going to see tremendous changes taking place in the world at large by reason of this rebirth of the dollar sign. So we ought to pray, the, pray and thank the Lord for the rebirth of the dollar. And he did say cryptocurrency will not replace the dollar. 
Cryptocurrency will not replace the dollar. It may look like it, but it is not going to replace the dollar. By the time the shakings are done, there shall be a rebirth. The Lord says it is yes. That means whatever it is going to come out looking like, no, it was inspired by the Most High God. Hallelujah to that. The word of the Lord continues and he says, missing pieces come together. They come together, missing pieces. The Lord is saying there are some things in your life that have not been coming together. There are a lot of questions you had concerning his promises over your life, concerning what the Lord has said, concerning what is happening in this time. There are many questions hanging in the air. And the Lord is saying the, miss, the missing pieces are coming together. And in this season, you are going to see the puzzle in its complete form. And every piece would have come together for you to see the perfect picture of what is taking place. The word, the word of the Lord continues and he says, Karakubis. I believe this is a place uh, somewhere in the desert place. I don't know. I stand to be corrected. He says, Karakubis. Karakubis. Messiah. Karakubis. So I believe that the Lord is going to be showing up in this place. Karakubis. God is choosing very places you might miss. You see that we don't we don't even know where this place is, but God has it in mind. It ought to teach you that God always sees all things and has you in mind. You may think you are insignificant. You may think that God doesn't even think about you. But when you see the places that God mentions that are hardly ever mentioned anywhere, you will know that God sees all things and is keen to all things and all men. The word of the Lord continues, he says, trace, trace. This, I believe, is a music channel. The Lord says, trace, shut down, trace, shut down. Do the math. The word of the Lord continues and he says, Melania. This is the first lady, uh, the wife to Donald J. Trump. The Lord says, Melania, meet the new Melania. This season, I speak through her. And then he pulled out a word that was also given to this uh, lady on the eighth of this on the eighth of February this year. The Lord has said, Melania, 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 I give you dreams, Melania, I give you dreams, Melania, I give you dreams. And then he also said, on the fourth of January this year. Melania, I use you to get my servant to serve me again, to serve in the office. I am calling him once again. You will have a decision to speak. Hallelujah. God knows how to get you to do what he wants you to do. So clearly, uh, President Trump highly esteems the opinion of his wife. Melania. So the Lord, knowing that, has now come through her to speak encouragement to Donald J. Trump to move and to do what the Lord is calling him to do again in this season, and that is to serve as the President of the United States of America in the seat of the presidency, like the Lord had ordained for him to serve in this very season. Now you can imagine why he wouldn't want to do it because of everything that is transpiring in this time and obviously the threat of the enemy against his life. But we know that anyone whose hand, whom the hand of the Lord is upon, no one can touch. So all we need to do is awaken to that fact that as long as you are in the will of the Lord, no one and nothing can touch you. Hallelujah. The Lord goes on to say trillion, trees, trees, trees tend to trillions. Such shall be of you, my children. Money shall grow on trees. Now there's a lot to this word that I will yet unpack in, on Saturday. Today I just want to give you the fullness of the word in case anything pops up during the week. But we are going to unpack some of these things for you to understand fully what the Lord is saying. He says, trees turn to trillions. A very, very important word you want to listen to. 
conquered, conquered. Conquered are thy enemies, conquered, nations, peace, similar, trees, allies. Now, there's a very sobering word, a warning to the United States of America. I believe I'm uh, coming to a close very soon. Just give me 10 more minutes. I'm literally uh, running through the word now because I do realize that I've, uh, I've taken too much of your time this evening. But nonetheless, like I said before, beloved, we are in peculiar times. And the word of the Lord should be uh, highly esteemed more than our natural food in this season. So as the Lord was giving me this word in this particular day, this was on the 28th of this month, two, two or three days ago, I had a vision where I saw two flags. One of the flags was the flag of the United States of America and the other flag at the time, because I was it, it was a very foggy uh, vision, I just assumed it was a, it was a, a, a flag for China. But I remembered what the flag looked like. And I saw these two flags colliding. And I knew that there was going to be, or the enemy was planning something uh, war-wise concerning the United States of America. So I just assumed in my head that it was China. The following day when I woke up, the Lord said, search that flag. And when I searched the flag, to my surprise, I found that it was the flag for Japan. It was the flag for Japan. And immediately after I saw, the Lord reminded me, to this day, I spoke about the movie Troy last year. And I spoke about uh, the Trojan horse. And the Lord has been speaking about this even to this day, until that very day on the 28th of March this week. Because we have been wondering what we are missing from what the Lord said concerning Troy. And I need you to pay attention, very, very important. And for those of you that have not seen that movie, the city of Troy was fortified. Many wanted to bring down the city of Troy, but they couldn't because of the walls of Troy. And so the nation that had come against Troy at that time, what they did was, in fact, it was more than one nation because the men that wanted to bring down Troy had gathered many nations to go and fight with him on this war against Troy. So there was, uh, he had his allies with him. And so they came up, one man came up with an idea that they should build a Trojan horse with wood. And then this huge horse that they built, they put some of their guys inside, some of their soldiers inside this, uh, this horse. And then the rest of them, they went and hit, and they even hit their ships. As they did that, when the king of Troy came out with his advisors and saw it, he assumed that it was a gift, a peace gift or a peace treat from his enemies, and that they had given up and they had gone back to their own land. And his son tried to warn him to tell him that I don't think this is a good idea. I don't think they would just hand it over like that. So there has to be something that we are not aware of. I'm, I'm, even the atmosphere is changing right now, beloved. God wants to frustrate the plans of the enemy. So his son tried to advise him accordingly. But the diviners and some of his counselors, that did not carry wisdom. They told him that it is a gift from the enemies and this is their way of showing that they have the victory. Because they didn't even worship the true and living God. They worshipped, uh, I forgot the God that they worshipped, but it's one of the gods that have been mentioned in the Bible. I'll look it up for you to, to tell you which God they worshipped. So they took this horse inside the city. They took this horse inside the city. And what took place after that, beloved, was tragic. In the night time, when the army, no one was expecting an attack, the people were relaxed, they were merry. And remember that they, they were celebrating that their enemies had left. So they were probably drunk, majority of them. This army came out of this horse and ravaged the city. 
and opened the doors for those that were outside to also come in so that they could take over the city and take it out. It was very tragic what happened. Only a remnant survived because before his son died, he showed his wife where to go once things start to take place in the city of Troy because he could anticipate that if I die, something might happen uh, for the city to be overtaken. And I need to make sure that I have made the necessary preparations for my family to be spared. The men came in, the soldiers came in, those that had been infiltrated through this Trojan horse, they opened the gates and they ravaged the cities. They raped the women, they killed the women and the children. They spared no one who was on that side. So when the Lord reminded me of that, because the same day I saw these flags, he also said Troy again that day, and that was the last time he said it on the 28th, after saying it for so many months. And then when I saw it, he said, look up what has transpired between Japan and America, where war is concerned. And when I looked it up, I found the incident concerning the Pearl Harbor that took place in 1941. And in the similar fashion, Japan took this harbor, this harbor, Ya Pearl, by surprise. The Americans were not expecting it at all. There was a lot taking place at that time. There was also uh, unrest in the world, all over the world, by reason of the Soviet and everything that was happening at that time. And it was during the time of Roosevelt. And what happened was that no one saw it coming. No one. And he reminded me again to show that he's speaking concerning this. He reminded me that in the past few weeks, if not the past two months, he's been saying Pacific, and he's also been saying Navy, the Navy, the Navy, the Navy, and I knew that he was talking about the Navy, but I didn't know what he was referring to. So when you, you go and look at what happened with at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii, you will find out that there was a launch, a surprise attack that was launched against the United States of America at that harbor. And what happened was similar to Troy. It was tragic because the men were taken by surprise. They did not see it coming. And what is the Lord saying in this very time? He said, the same way he said it the time he prophesied online, when I was alive, and the Spirit of the Lord said, what you see taking place is in Ukraine. It is not of the magnitude that they are making it out to look like to the rest of the world. It is meant to steal away your attention and for you to, to look to the enemy to strike from where he's not going to strike from. This is meant for the watchers of the nations and the watchers of the United States of America, the genuine watchers, to look for the enemy to strike from where he will not necessarily strike. Am I saying that Japan is going to be used to strike against America? No. But the Lord did show me the flag of Japan and the flag of the United States colliding. And then he took me to this one, this incident that took place in 1941 by the name Pearl, at Pearl Harbor, where Japan came against the United States of America in ways that you could have never imagined. And it was a well-fought and a well-prepared attack. It wasn't something of hazard that they did. They did their research. It was well planned. And the United States did not see it coming. The president didn't see it coming. He was shocked when they walked in and told him what has happened at the Pearl Harbor. Because no one saw it coming who could have stopped it. Now God in this season is calling us believers to pray against the plans of the enemy, to frustrate them, 
Because what is going to save us in this season, it is not the natural army on ground. Because there are men like you and me, and the tactics and the plans of the enemy, the ways of the enemy are not the ways, he doesn't work the way that you think. He works to the advantage of your ignorance. And right about now, because the issue concerning Ukraine and Russia was losing momentum and was about to cause the people to start thinking and redirecting their attention to all other issues and all other things that they are still prepping and they want to take you by surprise with those things. They needed to shift your attention to another useless thing yet again. And one of the things that we are seeing that he has released is what? This issue concerning Will Smith and his wife and the, the, the Grammys, is it the Grammys or whatever the awards were. The world is hitting at it. Yet another distraction. Everyone is talking about it, including believers, sharing their fair share of opinions concerning them. This is exposing us. It's actually very tragic of the church. This is exposing just how stale and how worldly we have become. We also are reacting to the things of this world at the neglect of travailing in prayer to get actual understanding of what is transpiring and what stands as a threat to our lives and the livelihood of our children and the lives of our children and the coming generations. We are busy giving reactions about what we feel about how, how Will Smith slept, whoever the other guy's name was. We are too busy giving our reactions to that. How fallen are you, humanity? How fallen are you? They know what they're doing. And now it's very, very easy for them to know how to stay your, your attention and to know if they have succeeded in distracting you because of social media. It becomes very easy. They are controlling you at their fingertips. They sit in their control rooms and they just say, what can we do to distract them this time? Hmm, I wonder, let's use the grannies. We'll go slap that guy and then you cry. Because remember, these are actors. God help us. God help us. Help us. Wake up, humanity. Wake up. There is a lot at stake. You need to wake up. You don't need distractions from your life. You need to face your life in the presence of the Most High God who will give you solutions. You don't need to distract yourself with Will Smith slapping with that guy and then crying on stage and saying he apologizes. They got exactly what they were looking for, your reaction and your distraction, for you to focus on that. While serious things are taking place behind the scene, wake up and smell what is happening and allow the Holy Spirit to sober you up and to get you to spend your time in a profitable manner. The Lord is saying we need to pray about this. Those of you that are able, go and research about what happened in 1941. It was, the exact time was 8 a.m. on Sunday, December 7th. 1941, a very tragic thing to face in that time. And it was a surprise attack. And the Lord, remember what the Lord has been saying. He said, it is not business as usual. Which means, and it's, at the same time, he also said, nothing is new under the sun. So he's saying, the enemy is riding on the same template that he has used from generation to generation. And the Lord is saying, I'm looking for my children who will come to me so that I can show them that template and what it looks like so that they can pray the right prayers to block every strategy of the enemy because I have given them that template 
and they know what the next move is. And they are coming against that move. They are frustrating everything that he has planned. Because everything is supposed to, to play out as they dish them out. But God is saying, stop falling into his traps. This current scandal with Will Smith is another trap to get you to focus on the wrong things. Sarah, it's not true. This is all, it's class A act that he spoke about. You are going to be very, very much traumatized if you are not careful. When truth is now laid bare and you get to see things for what they truly are. Some things that you were emotional about, that you cried out about, felt sorry for certain people about, and even, you know, uh, likened your situations to them and allowed them to shape your decisions. Only for you to realize that it was all a lie. And yet you have made life decisions based on those lies. Class A acts. Wake up. Children of God. The Lord continues and he says, I'm coming to a close. Don't worry. I'm coming to a close. The Lord says, my time, my time. He says, this is his time. This was 29.03. He says, my time as Baal Perazim. That is the God of breakthrough. God is saying in this season, He's ushering you into a season of breakthrough. We are also going to ponder on that. We are also going to dissect that so that you get a proper understanding of what a breakthrough means. Because I know there's a, a very shallow understanding we have of breakthrough. And then we never really break through because we just assume, oh, I received my breakthrough and we wait for something to break through somewhere. But God is going to be giving us a very clear understanding of what he means on Saturday. And then he goes on to say, my calendar of events, sign of nations, nations, this is my time. This is my time. You will bow. You will bow. Mankind, I announce myself. Mankind. The Lord is going to see through everything in this time. Do not be troubled, beloved. God is showing up in this season and he is going to show the world. He's going to show leaders. He's going to show those that have made themselves international bullies. That there is a God in heaven who sees all things. And when his time has come to act, you will even pray for them to be delivered from his hand. He says, Alpha and Omega. Alpha and Omega. Elevation time. Elevation. Increase. Remember, if you are in him, you will experience increase in the season. And then the Lord goes on to say, counter attack. Counter attacks on the enemy. So he says, the same enemy that has come against you, now God, if you allow him to take over, because he says, vengeance is mine. He says, now is my time to deal with the enemy that has been tormenting you, the enemy that has been, that has been attacking you, the enemy that has been taunting you, and the enemy that has stolen from you, destroyed you, and tried to kill you. Now it is my time to come as terror to deal with those enemies. The word of the Lord continues and he says, Dagon. Dagon has been defeated. This is the God of the Philistines of crop and fertility. Worshipped by the Philistines in the Bible. We are also going to delve into that one as well. So that you understand how it affects us today. Or how it affected us today. And how in God conquering this fallen God called Dagon is going to also, it is a simultaneous ushering of his children into a time of wealth transfer. We are going to be delving into that as well for you to know why the fall of Dagon and the fall of, uh, what is that one? That the Lord spoke of not so long ago. The one you decorate with in your house. I forgot, I forgot. I don't keep these, these gods in my mind. Uh, please someone if you remember the one that the Lord spoke of 
the one that is very prominent in 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 um, what is that place? Is it Indonesia? The one that is prominent in that place, even in this very country, the one we spoke about, the one you put in your houses, they even sell it um, in in home decor shops. Yes, Buddha. Thank you very much. It completely slipped my mind. I think it, which is a good thing because we can't be mindful of these fallen, uh, fallen gods. So you are going to see on Saturday how this, the falling of these fallen gods is also a very evident and living sign of the wealth transfer that is about to take place, that is already taking place in this time from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And also on Saturday, because of time, I'm going to stop here. But there is what we call, the Lord is saying he is redefining value chain. He is redefining, redefining value chain. So for those of you that are into business or you're aspiring to go into business, and even beyond business, because when we talk about value chain, in the world, it may refer only to, you know, commerce, but... The way the Lord is explaining it, it goes beyond commerce. It actually affects the entirety of your life. From your marriage, to your assignment as per given by the Lord, to your career, to your parenting skills, to how you are perceived as an individual, or how you want to be perceived by the world. It goes into the, the fullness of every faculty of your life, or every aspect of your life. So God wants to redefine value chain and give us his own understanding of value chain that we may be empowered in this season and that the enemy may stop taking advantage of our ignorance and we may allow ourselves to be made ready for that which the Lord is getting ready to do in our lives in this season. I believe him for you, beloveds. Every single one of you. Listen, the abundance that has been released in this time, it is too much to be wasted by not having everyone come into an understanding of the ways of the Lord. I've said it many times. Don't even set your eyes on the abundance. Set your eyes on Jesus. And all these other things shall be added unto you. So when we talk about value chain, God is going to be giving you an understanding of who you are. The inner man. Because from the inner man, everything else on the outside is attracted to your life. Your inheritance is attracted into your life by reason of the change that first took place in the inside of you and then starts to show on the outside of you. So we're going to be coming into that and also the principles around it. And we're going to be doing a comparison between the understanding of value chain in the world and the understanding of value chain from the Lord. I literally was just listening to him. I didn't take this from any book. I didn't take it from any other source. The part that I took from the world was the understanding according to the world that I took from Google. But the part from the Lord, it was straight from the Holy Spirit. And he was, put, he was literally downloading it into my spirit like this morning. So I'm going to be giving you that on Saturday. Make sure that you are on time because there's a lot that we need to cover. There's a lot that I need to give you an understanding of in that day. So let us make sure that exactly at 5 p.m. we are seated. We are ready to take the word of the Lord. Like I've said, nothing is more important than his word in this very time. So you better give it first priority. Whatever it is that you need to get done on Saturday, make sure that you get it done on time so that your appointment with the Lord, you are able to make that appointment with the Lord and get what you need, you desperately need for this season to be able to make informed decisions for your life and for your future. I believe that I have given you the fullness of the word that I was supposed to give you today. I do pray that you were edified. I know that I am edified, I'm encouraged, and I pray that you are also encouraged. Remember, my friend, praise is power. Praise 
in this season is your tool, it's your weapon. Remember to praise and depression will never know your doorstep. Discouragement will not know your doorstep. Stress will not know your doorstep. All of these things, fear of the unknown will not know your doorstep. All manner of familiar spirits will flee from your place. They will know this is not a this is a no-go zone. Because as you praise the holy fire of the most high God will fortify your space. And God will ensure that at all times your mind is sober and you know exactly what he is doing in that time. You have full clarity and understanding. God bless you and God keep you. And I do pray that you take this word into your life and you act you actually do what the word says. You won't be just a hearer of the word, but you will also be a doer of the word. Boy, can I talk. Or can I say the Holy Spirit can I do hope that you are encouraged, beloved. Until we meet again on Saturday, have a wonderful evening.